<laughs> right, let's. Um, I can actually see the screen now, which is great. You can't, but hey. <laughs> um, the nice thing about this is, don't you don't have to take notes. I've actually written this um, I, myself and Joe uh, founded Journal London. Quite a few people here from Journal London. I've actually built this all on the Journal London site, taking the Journal London site, which is quite a complex site, and use that as a as a basis, and written the whole thing as a category blog view in the Journal London site. So take the URL, all of my notes, all the research, all the uh, resources are on there. So um, don't worry uh, about getting anything. They're on the Joomla London UK site. Yeah, so www.joomlalondon.co.uk slash converting15-16 plus. And I'll put that up at the end. Um, it's a hidden uh, menu link at the moment, but it, I'll make it appear um, after. Um, so, very quickly, let's try and whiz through this. Um, before you start any upgrade to 1.5 to 1.7 plus, because we're going to be coming to 1.8 Christmas time, um, here's a checklist of things you really should do. Do you need to upgrade? Will third party software you've installed on your site be compatible? Will any features you need not be available in the new version? Will the template cope? Um, will the change break links, bookmarks, site traffic, will that suffer? Because think about it, your new system, especially if you're going from, let's say, uh, an older version 1, or if you're changing SEF 404 you'll be using and you won't be in the future, that could change your links, your URL. So you've got to consider that. You've got to have some, some means to cope with that. Um, as software ages, it becomes more mature and errors become uh, more documented. So stability should grow, in theory. So, you know, if you've got a, and we've got a couple of sites which clients don't want to move from version 1, we don't host them, we, we couldn't host them, but we, we help them out and we give them uh, advice. Um, we've converted uh, several 1.5 sites, but there's some 1.5 sites which can live as 1.5 for the rest of their life. The stability of 1.5 is getting greater and greater, so why change? We're also building in 1.7, and we have converted 1.7s as well. Um, Um, Does control and pass? We've been doing that several times. It's not working, though. No, control script boy. It's not worried about that. Right, reasons to upgrade. Um, to be on the edge. We all like to be on the edge. Um, need for functionality that's not covered in the current version. Third party software that is only available in the new version. Now, tomorrow I'll be doing a talk on modules. And I've actually done some new features in the module that I'm building. And I'm thinking, do I actually want to backwardly pull these to 1.5? 1.5 is fine as it is. I've not had anyone ask for any new features. But there are new features in the API that I'm connecting to in the daylight module. So maybe I'll concentrate those on 1.7. Another thing that developers got to think about is, are they going to make their modules, their components and everything, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, XXX compatible? Or are they going to make in all the same module? Or are they going to split it out and have different modules for different compatibilities? If that's the case, it's a bit of a nightmare for developers to keep going back and fiddling with the 1.5. So you might find that in future, some of the new features come in the later versions of Joomla and necessarily won't be backported. So it's a consideration. Um, new ways to use the site, such as mobile support, become uh, better supported in newer versions. Now you go back to some of the very early templates. Did they support mobile phones or that sort of thing? Not very well. Whereas some of the new ones are absolutely brilliant. So it, it is a consideration. Um, server environment changes and not compatibility compatible with older versions. Now we already know that, as I put above, that PHP um, uh, 5.2.4 <laughs> plus and MySQL 5.0.4 plus are needed for Joomla 1.6.1.7. Um, so you can get divides in servers. You know, if you're if you're in a shared environment and your shared environment decides to go one way or the other, you might have to choose to upgrade because of that. 
Um, I know there's some people here who, who, who run um, hosting environments. Um, that they may have a lot of people wanting to upgrade that s server, that the, all of their servers. They may want to stick to a newer version if they find there's better stability. So you might actually have to upgrade your site because of that. Um, I put here server environment changes and compatibility uh, changes are not compatible with older, older servers, older software. But I also put new version is easy to develop, MVC and framework changes. Now the talk we had from the gentleman next door who's now doing PHP um, was on frameworks and on MVC. And I think it, uh, how many developers are there in this room? Okay, well, isn't MVC a good idea? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes our life a lot easier. Yeah. So, you know, why would you not want, and it's getting better and better with Joomla. You know, 1.5 was a big improvement in some aspects, but not all. 1.6 and 1.7, it's, it's, it's a lot more MVC. So, for those that are developing, it's really, really good. Um, new version is better for clients to use and train. <coughs> now, I'm using a lot of ones, doing a lot of 1.7, and I'm finding that I'm really enjoying 1.7 from a adding just content and articles and building stuff. It's more user-friendly, more click-friendly. Um, when I go back to work on a 1.5, I think, ah, oh, if only I had that feature. Mm -hmm. When I look at a one version, for occasionally for a client, I have to think, how do I do this? <laughs> um, so usability is changing all the time, and that's the whole point of this evolving it. So why would you want to be able to use that? By the way, the hashtag is uh, JDUK one one M one five one seven. <laughs> Please, nothing rude. Just for the, again for those at the back, what was that M five one seven? It's the same ones they're using throughout. M uh, Joomla Day UK MD UK one one two thousand eleven, um, and then I put M migration one five one seven. Right, before we start, back up, back up, and back up. Now, I'm sure most of you, if you're developers, know, know about the Keeper Backup. I use it all the time. We've been using it for years. Um, really, really good idea to, to use that before you start this whole process. Um, I should have, uh, sorry, I'm a bit out of kilter because I've skipped several of the earlier ones because of all the problems. Um, how many people here have actually upgraded from 1.5 to 1.7? Just a couple. Um, how many maintainers to? Oh, that's quite a few. That's good. Okay. Um, basically, what I'm going to go through is my journey and what I did to get sites from 1.5 to 1.7, and also some of the things I did when I found forums that couldn't do things, how I got around them. So that's the whole point of some of the resource stuff. Take a dump of the database using PHP, MyAdmin, or equivalent. I like to do that as well as doing an Akiva backup. Because often you'll do a backup of the file system. You'll be doing things. It's easy, and most of your configuration and all of the words are in the database. So effectively, the files often don't change. So you can actually do the database dump right up until the point of migration and have the latest number of users or whatever. So always keep your, your MySQL right up to date. Make sure the backups are off-site and off the server. Now, what happens if you absolutely screw the system and you realise that it was <laughs> in the old Akiba, still on the server, didn't download it, you're a little stuffed. So if, if the worst comes to the worst, and the migration process shouldn't cause you such problems, but only the other night I was working pretty <coughs> late and I slipped and instead of hitting compress, I clicked on the next button which was delete. Um, you know, ouch, yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could get out of that, going to the waste basket and going, uh, you know, what was the things I just got rid of? But you know, when you're tired, you do hit the wrong button. So make sure your backup is off the server. It has happened to people before, where they got it all backed up and they deleted that as well. So, you know, it's a really good thing to just remember. Um, take a look at the MySQL and also start to uninstall. Now, there's, there's plenty of anecdotal uh, cases of people who had amazing backup systems and the day they came to employ, you know, actually do something about it, they found the backups didn't work, had never been configured correctly, right, yeah. or, yeah. So, you know, so I always like to, just on a local host, start to unpack it, see that it's okay, so that you know that you can restore it. 
checking you have the disk space on the server, that you're not going to go over sites, because what we're going to be doing is doubling that website. Um, so plus, you need a little bit of working space. So if you're on a shared environment or you're on a dedicated environment, but you're very near your limits, you could be going over your limits. And that really doesn't happen halfway through a migration. So do make sure you've got plenty of disk space. Tools of the trade to start migration. Download the latest version of JUpgrade. Now there's other ways to do it. Um, the, the, gen talks, uh, the documentation talks a few different ways. Um, we use at least two different ways when we were going from version 1 to 1.5. But I found that the JUpgrade supports not only the core Joomla, but it also supports um, several other components, which I'll come on to briefly. And I think the guy who's going to do the other talk will go more into those components, um, assuming they work. Um, all of these links will open up in a, a new window, and I've gone throughout the whole site. So if you really do want to go through this process, go to the URL. I'll put it up at the game at the end. Um, and everything will be there, and we will leave it there, so that you, you don't have to make loads and loads and everything. But this is where it is in the extensions, and you can get the latest version there. And it says its migration supports 100% all of those things. I would disagree. It doesn't support modules 100%. We will come on to that, and I will show you. Is it, sorry, is it, is it pretty stable? Because I've always been quite hesitant to use those kinds of tools, just in case it decides to add things or you know, take things I've, away. I've, I've found it, all, all the times I've used it, great. great. Um, so I know, fun. reading through the forums, there are a lot of people who haven't. Yeah. I do wonder if they actually read everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, being a developer of software myself, my first Joomla day, uh, I was actually having, uh, in Maidstone, I was having someone messaging me saying that my new extension didn't work, and he was really disgusted that I hadn't got back to it within five minutes. And I pointed out I was in the lecture at the time, and it was a little tight, but I wouldn't get back to it. Could he explain why it didn't work? He said, oh, it just won't install, and, and this doesn't install, and that doesn't install, and that doesn't. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> um, and after a day or so of negotiations, we we found that actually he'd moved from a different server environment to a live site, hadn't changed any of live paths, hadn't changed an awful lot of things, and lo and behold, it didn't work. <laughs> but it was all my fault within five minutes. So, you know, there's a lot of people on forums like that, so read through some of the, the comments, um, because often, you know, you, you can get a feel for actually, it may be a little bit complicated and people are missing out a step, and it's really not the, developers' fault in that respect, it's just complicated, um, and they need to do it all. Um, now make sure you have the latest version of Joomla 1.5. Now I've seen this on the forum, he says it, he says it, he says it again, and then someone asks, I'm on Joomla 1.5.17. Um, so I put here, um, and I've even put the latest version for you to download, how easy is that? Um, if you happen to be on um, 1.5.22, you can get the latest, you really our bands have left it so long. It's been stable for a long time, 123. Um, if you happen to be on 1521 or less, then unplug the server and find another job. Because <laughs> you really are leaving them well behind in versions. There was a period a little while ago, people at Jumlin remember that I'd start my uh, start each month with the same thing. Has everybody backed up and upgraded their site? Because we had a, a new one every month for three months. So I didn't really have to change much, but I mean, 1523 has been stable for a long time, um, and we've been on it a long time, so hopefully it will be on it. Um, if you promise never to slip up again and go behind, um, here is the packages for other versions of Joomla, so you can go back and uh, cover up with tracks. Um, now back up again, because you've done all this work, you might as well. Now, the one thing it does need, and he says this in many places, and I'm sure many people who fail don't do it, is it needs Mutors on 1.2. So you need to switch on that plugin. And then we get a nice little screen which goes through um, several options. I think the other chat's going to go through these options more. But it's, um, it's fairly uh, obvious uh, what all these do. Basically, what is your database? 
um, the, the uh, prefix to it, what is the new database that you want? Because remember, this is going to copy the database. So you're going to get a, the database tables all again with a new prefix. Um, I don't know if you remember, if anyone's done 1 to 1 5, that used to actually renumber all of the um, uh, articles. So you'd start off at about 10,000 or 200,000 or something silly. But yeah, but it doesn't do it on this one. It's much nicer. So, but the tables will have a new name, so a new prefix. So um, be aware of that. Um, total process took a couple of tea a minute and push of one button. It really was that simple. I was very, very pleased. And this is an actual screenshot of it while I was drinking my tea. You don't get to see the tea, but you get to see the, the uh, uh, leads popping up and saying what it's done. And, and that's it. It's absolutely amazing. So, ta-da! This is what we get. And this is the Joomla London site. And what it does is it copies everything into JUpgrade. So you now have a second site running along, hence twice the site size, two databases. So we've now got a second, data, second uh, website. It looks all nice and shiny. It says that it's the new version. Um, everything's there. We've got all of our, our, let's just check our users, user manager. Um, it's a shame the screens are smaller, but you can see there's lots and lots of users there. You can see the bottom, we're going well off the screen there, so loads of users, it's great. Um, just check the menu links, menus, main menu. Yep, everything's there. Ah, uh, hang on. Don't think everything is there. Let's just check through. It looks like everything's there, but when we actually read a little closer, um, component does not exist. Component does not exist. Oh. Component does not exist. Now, we can, using um, this software, actually upgrade quite a few of the components. Virtual, uh, they list them all on, on the site, but quite a few of the main core ones, you can actually download the latest and upgrade. But I'm going to go on to the more fiddly ones. But just to be aware, it looks great, but when you start looking closely, content, article manager. Is everybody familiar with the 17 site? Anyone not seen the back end of the 17 site? Oh, okay, this is the 17 site. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, all of our content is there, all of our articles. Uh, they've all been copied across correctly, the categories have been cor cor uh, created correctly. Remember, we don't have um, uh, sections and categories, we have go straight to categories, but it does the nesting fine and everything, so that's great. Um, and the IDs, they've been preserved. So we're not on 20,014, 20,015. So that's quite nice. Um, so now I'm going to go to my components. Wow, there's not many components there. Um, if I actually go onto the Joomla London site that we copied it from, um, I'll write into that just so you can do it, get a comparison. They said I was mad when I said I was going to do the whole talk online. Still. Um, that is what we should have had, a nice big list. Joomla London, we actually get a lot of software and just test it. Uh, members can bring along an idea, and in, in the actual meetings, they'll go, has anyone got a good extension for, oh, I've got it, and while we're doing this, Joe's often installing it, and then Joe will click the button and go, well, this one. So it, it's kind of, it's messy, but it's, it's a working site for, for members of the Joomla community. Um, but if we go back to um, this site here, that was all the components that I had. So the core components. Extensions, module manager. Um, I think there's 31 on here and there's about 94 on the original one. So I've lost a lot of my modules. Um, wait for that to load, there we go. So again, the core one seems to come across, but there's only just into two pages. Whereas if I go into the extensions module manager here, <coughs> we've got a lot more. We've got a hundred, I think it's 94 or something. So, uh, can I just ask for the modules and the yeah. components yeah. that are on the new site? Yeah. 
Are, are they going to jump files in the folder structure from those components and modules? Or there will be a database. The database will be there. And that's what I'm going to come on to. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what, do we, what did we expect? Well, um, oh, the other thing is we haven't actually seen the site. Let's see our nice shiny site. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it should have looked something like... Just touch the printing button. As I say, it's a messy site because we just throw things on, but that's what it should have looked like. So, what should we do? Panic. Don't panic. <laughs> Couple of things to bear in mind. The templates will be very different. Uh, remember that all the module positions in the new template because the template that you had in there isn't going to be in there, um, will be have different load positions. It's a bit like going from a rocket theme to a U theme. Suddenly all the modules disappear. Um, quickly go in and change side R8 to left and vice versa. Um, go and have a look. See if you've got a 1.7 version of the template that you've been using. Put that on. Um, a lot of, if you're using one of the... Uh, larger clubs, they've actually gone back and converted a lot of their old templates to a uh, 1.7 version, uh, 1.6, 1.7 version. You can take out your custom CSS, put that back in, change your module positions, and then you may actually find that most of it works fine. Um, now, the other thing to bear in mind is TP equals 1. Everybody uses that, don't they? Yeah, you all know where it is. What about 1.7? First time you go to use it, you might not find it because actually it's switched off in 1617. So again, I put here extensions, template manager options, enable preview uh, module positions. Very helpful, real pain to find the first time you come across it. Start going through all the modules, setting the positions to the correct position. Now I'm going to go. We haven't got much time, but I'll quickly skim through these. But as I say, this is all on the web. You can read it at your leisure. I put a load of links to um, some interesting discussions on the forums, which talk about building templates and changing templates. The things to bear in mind is that we have a new thing in our um, uh, XML, which is the sysini file. Now, I'm going to go into that in much greater detail in my talk tomorrow, which is just on modules. It's a major part of the modules. Uh, is the whole new um, ini farm system. So I, I'm going to skate over a little bit, but just to show you what um, the old bees five ini used to look like. I think you can see it all there with its pound, its pound signs hashtag. And um, notice, remember that we uh, I'm attached to it. Um, that we've got uh, no quote marks. Don't need quote marks. Well, that all changed because everything now needs quote marks. So all of the uh, positions and everything have to be in quote marks for them to work. Um, notice we have the pound sign anymore. This is a proper ini file. Um, you can't use the same old way of doing the XML. So again, this is the new positions as they're set out in these. So there is quite a bit of difference behind um, behind the scenes, as it were. So um, they're, they're all the default positions for it. Like we had this conversation earlier about position one, position two, position three. Yeah. The actual mapping to left, right, up and down. They're defined in the ini file, is it? Yes. yes. And with one seven, if you go, you can actually click on the template and pull back the positions of that template. So you can then, because you remember, the other thing was you used to have virtually every single position of every single template that you've loaded. Mm. Whereas now you can actually select your template and it will just show you the positions that that template has, right. which is much, much easier and more helpful. Um, I use it all the time. Great. Yeah. Um, under the hood, what's the difference? Um, well, first point of call is, is, is the docs, and I'll quickly open this one because um, the docs are brilliant. Um, this actually tells you what's new in 1.6. And I'm just going to very quickly scroll down so you can realise that there's quite a lot of work that was done over those three years. It's quite a bit. What I've done is I've, I've tried to go through and pick out the main things. Um, what? Well, no, no legacy. Um, 
If you're still using legacy mode, <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a shock, you can't. So, and there's no legacy from 1.5 to 1.6 and, and onwards. Um, so you're going to have to go in there and make some changes. If your own code, if you're relying on components and stuff that JUpgrade cannot simply pull in and you've got to go in there and start doing something yourself, legacy mode is one of those first things that you need to tackle. And there's a whole load about how to get around legacy mode just above there. Um, I very recommended, recommended reading. Depreciating features, again, just a checklist. Um, there's a lot there. File and database search will help you narrow down any areas that need upgrading. So think about it, all these things have been depreciated. So if I do a search through the database, if I do a search through my code and find depreciated functions, that's where I need to start hacking away and, and, and changing things. And in this depreciated list, it actually gives you the, the alternatives. So it may be a case of just doing global searches, global uh, find replace, and then going through and making sure you've got the right number of parameters, because the parameters may have changed the, the attributes for each of the, the calls. Um, done away with, index, index 2, do you remember the days of index 2? No more, and index 3, everything's done through index. Global option, include folders, well almost. Basically all the third party libraries are no longer in the include. So if you included includes from the include that included third parties, you can't include them anymore. <laughs> uh, the back end's template, that's disappeared. Uh, got two nice shiny new templates for the back end at least, and we found several others which look great. So go and play with those. DS, now, um, I'm not going to make too much. Uh, note, lots of 1.6 docs uh, still have DS in the path. It's gone, it's no more. You won't see, if you see a DS, slash it. Basically, you will have to be on a newer version of PHP. We've got rid of 4, you won't work on 4. You can't use PHP 4 for 1.6. You know, there's a, there's a level entry of PHP. And that gets around the descriptor problem. So you don't really need the descriptor anymore, the slash everywhere. And it's interesting seeing through the docs, some of it explains this and then changes it, and some of the docs still have the descriptors. So, you know, go through and get rid of the descriptor. And in fact, this came up in a forum post about two days ago. Someone, I was looking in the development, and someone said, where's the descriptors gone? <laughs> well, they're gone. <laughs> so, um, Right, quickly going through each of the, the main aspects, the component. Um, if you come across a third party piece of software that's not working, it's key to your website, you've, you've migrated, you had to migrate, you wanted to migrate, whatever, and you can't get it to work. I've gone through a few things that I feel you should do. Um, search the developer site uh, and then the forum. If there is none, then check the Joomla forums, because usually if there is no developer forum, then everybody whinges on the Joomla forum. So have a good search for that component there and see. Because of where we are, I put go for it. I thought the older members of the audience might appreciate that one, and it was avoiding a certain key word. Um, but otherwise, yeah, go on Google. Um, <laughs> ask the developer. Uh, it takes a reason for them to do all the work. So it might be that you know, they've been sitting around, they're doing other things, it hadn't occurred to them to upgrade that piece of software. How do they know that anyone's using it? Obviously, virtual mark, a few things like that, maybe. But if you're a third party developer and you've made a few fancy things, and people said, great, and two years have passed, why would you suddenly go back and, and upgrade it? Well, you might be doing it for zero audience. So actually giving them some feedback might be really useful. Pay the developer, wow. I mean, you know, it is their time, so give them an incentive. If you ask them, they may upgrade it, and then you could actually incorporate it in your site, get the functionality back. If the database hasn't changed, and the database structure has changed between the two, and um, when you uh, actually do your uh, upgrade, it's worth going into PHP Mobile and just looking at the size of the database and how it's changed. Um, a few things have, have moved about. Um, obviously, access controls have changed, and all that sort of thing. Ah, and that's another important point. Anything that relied on access control on the different levels, they should have been remapped to the old levels 
and then you can extend it. But that is a major change that the components need to take into account um, and developers need to take into account. See if the software forked or has been superseded. If there is a demand, then that may have happened. So, you know, we actually use software and we've used it on an old site. And when we come to do the upgrade, we've actually found that that software stopped some while ago. And actually, a new piece of software has come along, which is even better. So, you may actually not need to install that same software, but the, a newer fork or whatever, which will give you the functionality plus. Um, convert it yourself. It's all open source, so use that fact. And that's the whole point of open source. That's the whole point of why that development chart was growing at a faster rate, since, especially since the MVC. Um, because we can see what the code is, and we can develop it ourselves if we want to. So use that fact. Don't feel frightened to go in and have a go. New version, but no smooth integration is all lost. Well, bridging the data divide, um, make sure that the original is on the latest version. That's really key to bridging. So, you know, don't go and use a very old version of Virtual Mart. Don't use a, an old version of a lot of things. Um, you really need to find out what the latest version is in 1.5, upgrade it in 1.5, in your old 1.5 site, and then do the conversion. When you come to put the 1.7 version of the software in, hopefully the difference between the softwares won't be so great. Um, I, one, the first one I had to do was using Zoo. I looked on all the forums, the forum says you cannot use Jailbreak to do Zoo. Back then you couldn't, I don't think you can at the moment. Um, I looked on Zoo and everybody went, oh, it doesn't seem to upgrade. So I then thought, wait a minute, you can export all the data. So I went into Zoo and exported all the data. I backed it up and went to the very latest version. I exported all the data, I then went into the latest version in 1.7, and I imported all the data. It didn't quite work. There was a little bit of fiddling to do in the database. There was a, um, a few things that had changed. But actually, it was only a half hour job. And I'd gone from the old version of Zoo to the new version of Zoo. Now, Zoo has changed since, and is now using JSON to save everything. So it may be a case you have to go from the old to the new, but the one before it changed from XML to JSON, and then go from the XML version to JSON. So if the software that you're using, the third party, has had a major change, you may need to go to a, the nearest version of that, then export, and then import into the new version of that. You're all, all with me on that. Good, it's quite a few nods. But it does work, and um, the client was delighted. They came over for a friend, they came over for a weekend, and I thought I was going to have some bad news. And after the first morning session, it was like, well, everything's there. It's like, yes, it's all great, it's all working. Um, not everything goes as smoothly as that, but it did. <laughs> um, then uh, if we have to get it in and fix it, I've given you quite a few things here, a few links. This is a link on how to remove the legacy, the component, uh, by uh, Alex Jumbo Eddy. Um, and I've also put some essential reading, um, which is all about how to do a new 1.7 compo uh, component. Um, and the last thing I added there was the, um, for a component, is adding the update server. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, and I'll go into more detail tomorrow, but now we can have update servers in our software. So for a developer, we can actually alert our users to the fact that we've changed our software, they, in theory, can hit a little button, and if we've done everything right, their software will just upgrade. So they've got no excuses now, uh, you know, that arduous task of downloading it and all that sort of thing has gone. So, you know, we can give them a smooth, as developers, a smooth path to upgrading the software that we produce. And I think it's really important to try and make it as easy for the clients as possible so that they can upgrade it quickly, smoothly, Think of it, a lot less uh, forum posts of, um, it's all gone wrong, how do we fix this? If we can actually make it easier for them. So the um, update servers and how to use those is uh, quite an interesting read. Plugins is the other thing that's going to be changed. Um, and uh, one of the things 
to bear in mind is this little lot here. Renamed events. So any events that you're calling, you may have been calling the old names. You've got new names to call. Um, does that make sense? So, you know, there's, there's new things you can do, but some of the old things have changed. So again, go through the list, uh, a little bit of file searching and database searching, you should be able to find them all. And in most cases, it will be uh, a string replace, a simple replace. Be aware that parameters, the way things are passed through may have changed, but it shouldn't be too arduous. Um, and then a little light reading. And again, this is all just focusing on plugins. If you read this lot, there's not anything you really can't do. <laughs> um, it teaches you how to build a plugin in 1.7. Um, the, the, the documents is very good on that. Components and plugins, it seems people have done it, they've documented it, and it's really, really nice. Um, the module, well, that's another day. Um, as I'm doing the talk tomorrow, um, I confess I didn't know I was doing the talk tomorrow until last week. Um, yeah. Slight mix up, I went to see what time I was on for this talk and realised I was going to have two talks. Um, so uh, I've done quite a lot of research in the last week and I also dug out my own uh, module, uh, Daily Life, and um, converted that to 1.7 for tomorrow's talk. Um, that taught me an awful lot. Um, I don't think there's as much on the, in the docs for modules as there is for plugins and components. There's a little confusion. I downloaded an awful lot of modules to have a look through them and found that people weren't abiding by the naming conventions, etc. They weren't using all the features you can now use. Um, and there was a few gaps in the documents which I'm going to go on and fill. Um, but um, tomorrow's talk will basically talk you through in great detail how to build a module in 1.7 and what you need to do. Um, is that anywhere below? Click on the right one. I have no idea what time I'm supposed to stop now, but I'm um, going to come towards the end. Um, this is the resource page. These are all linked to either uh, the docs or other authors um, who were really helpful when I was converting uh, and gave me really central reading. A lot of these actually are um, forum posts and stuff which then go off and answer other questions. So, you know, it really is a case of when, you have, when you've got a good train journey and you can get the internet access or whatever, read through these, get a really good base understanding because then when you start doing your conversions and you hit a problem, you'll think, oh, I think it might be to, to do with that, and you'll have some idea what to do. It's a bit daunting when you see that ta-da, and it's like, is that it? <laughs> um, of uh, what could have gone wrong. But actually, when you've done this reading, it's very quick to actually convert it back. The whole conversion process from a 1.5 to 1.7 site took me less than a day. But the background reading took quite some time. This should help you immensely, because this whole site, because basically that's all the background reading you need. Um, those who've converted their sites, how did they go? How did, how did you find that? Mm. Yeah. One day. Uh, yeah? If you don't have uh, some special extensions, a lot of the new module, old modules, and something like that. So yeah. In our company, we have great old sites which don't use a lot of Third yeah, that's why I did the Journal of London site because it's got about every third party extension that you could, you could imagine. Um, so I want to see how badly you can break a site. Um, so, and you can. <laughs> okay, uh, the last slide is back to the first, as it were. And no one's asked any questions, so that's great. If you do have any questions, um, you can go and put a hashtag on there. And we can, you can kind of correspond through the weekend then, and we can answer any questions you come up with. Um, the actual uh, URL, I don't think you guys can see it all. Um, so it's converting 
There we go. So it's jumlalondon.co.uk converting 15-16 plus. And everything from the talk is on there. Are there any questions? Before I um, well, I carry really, I'm under the impression that I'd, I'd need to upgrade to 1.7 from 1.5 for live, live site stop supporting it because of the security. But you're saying that's not necessarily so, we can just keep 1.5 going. And well, 1.5 has got at least, is it two years life? One year. Yeah. Yeah. I, to date, yeah. well, finished. Yeah, yeah. 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 but the maturity, I mean, you know, you've noticed that the, the rollouts, the bug fixes are slowing. Um, with all software. Now we still, has anyone got here a one site, a version one site? Well, there you go, I think that answers the question. Um, but you know, if you, um, say you did get added into or something, people you would be able to say, why don't you upgrade them now, you wouldn't be able to excuse it. It's the worst case scenario I'm thinking of. Okay, uh, it's kind of shifting on security more, but if you have upgraded, uh, to the latest version, which will continue for at least another year, um, Bug Squad will be supporting it, then yes. But I can't see Bug Squad and others totally abandoning. Um, and bear in mind that the people who have a lot of 1.5 sites, you know, we're going to keep 1.5 sites because we've developed them so much and the client doesn't need it changed. They're not going to pay us to change it, they don't want us to change it, so who's going to pay for it? So, but the one thing is, we don't want any of sites hacked into. So we're going to be looking through Millworm, other uh, hacking sites to see how people do things and fixing them. So, you know, keep an eye on the forums because I know one is going to have a longer life than that. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to keep a lot of our sites on 5 if they don't need upgrading. Um, don't feel forced to. I, I don't see that the security would be an issue. I don't think I will be upgrading because of security. Um, not, not unless there was a vulnerability that they no, no, I can't see the reason. Because um, don't forget that all the developers who are developing have also got one plus sites, most of them. So it's, it's in their own interest to solve the problem. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a vague question, but um, I've done this a bit painful. Um, I've upgraded from 1 to 1.5 on one of my sites, and it was not nice. Yep. Is, would you what say from 1.5 to 1.7, is it as bad, worse, or better? We already do 1.5 to 1.6, even though 1.6 now doesn't exist, because that's where most of the changes yeah. are. And it really was. Uh, well, how many other components have you got? Uh, I tend to use quite a few extensions. Components right. Like you that. need to do research then. Yeah. Do the research, look on the forums, see what they've said about the upgrade process. Um, but it probably is. Go to the latest version of 1.5. If the databases haven't changed, if they haven't added new tables or anything, in, and taken the opportunity to go to 1.7 as changing the structure or anything, then it could simply be reinstall it uh, and you're away. And it all comes in. Template changes is probably going to be the biggest thing. Styling changes. No, that's too worried. No, no. All the sort of general structure. I just remember because uh, when my break from one and that, it was not. It was another table structures and yep. problems with that. Some of the data, for some reason, didn't go across. Yep. And, you know, things like, uh, you know, hyphen, um, high, high, not hyphen. High. Uh, speech marks coming up in the wrong place, breaking the imports. Yeah. I didn't that. experience any of that problem. Yeah. Um, and don't forget that it's all being done in, in J-Upgrade. So you're doing it all on the site, or you can yeah. do it on a separate one, you can shift it all off and do it on, the, on another server. Yeah. But you don't. it's not going live until you've yeah. fixed it all. So you've got plenty of time. You don't have to... Um, you know, it's not a, uh, whoops, once I've hit that button, that's the end of it. You can do it as many yeah. times as you like. Yeah, um, and then what you do is you just literally copy the problems across. Uh, you do a simple swap and the site has changed. It's gone, you know, we, we, we actually did the going live in less than five minutes when we were happy with it. Yeah. Um, it really is that simple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so should we uh, upgrade from 1.5 to 1.7 or should we wait for uh, 1.8 that's going to January 2004? Um, there's going to be because changes. It's but just upgrading, upgrading. Yeah. And do it once, but do it properly. Okay. You don't have to do it every time with every new person. Yes. Very true. Um, to go from 1.6 to 1.7, and from 1.7 to 1.8, is really just clicking a button. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd risk it. Um, I mean, what you do is you back it up, buy it on your laptop on a, on a, a web server, mm -hmm. hit that button, see how it looks, test it. Yeah. Um, 
the, the several, I really don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. I think part of the German community, the developers community, the, the, the things they're doing with the frameworks and like, is to make this experience easier and easier. Yeah. So that Every we can, you know, this, this fast release cycle, I think is brilliant yeah. for development. You know, if, you, if you've got a good idea and it fails to get in and you have to wait three years, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> whereas if you've got a good idea and there's a new version coming out, I mean, I use, can I say the word without being hit, Ubuntu. Now that comes out every six months, you know. I don't have to upgrade every six months. Every year there's a long term. They go, but I'm used to upgrading all of my stuff every six months. Firefox, how often does that come out? Yeah. <laughs> Slightly controversially, that it seemed the other day to, to actually save an index, uh, 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 HTX is file for me, which was very nice of it, so that my site on my, my machine kept redirecting back to the old site, even though I cleared everything and could not work out why in the life of me. It was so, shame, it? so thank you for saying just a little too much. Um, because the server guys, I was talking, go, oh, we can see them. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I really don't see it as a problem. I think if you make integration, if you make migration from one to the other, an easy process that people can do, and you can bring in lots and lots of incremental changes, it is a smoother journey, and we can all get a better experience. Um, otherwise, you've got the fundamental blocks, and then it becomes a headache, and you put it off. A bit like doing tax returns once a year, yuck. Whereas, you know, if you do your accounts every day, so I'm told, it's a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Otherwise, I think we'll wrap it up. Okay, thank you very much.